One of the best ways to make disciples is to start a discipleship group. So a discipleship group is a group of people that meet together regularly to encounter God and grow in their relationship with Jesus. I want to start this video by giving you four reasons that you should start a discipleship group. Actually, five reasons you should start a discipleship group. The first one is this. It's a great way to grow in your own relationship with God. Honestly, when you start teaching others and, and leading others and hosting and serving other people in this way, it, it actually forces you to consistently be at the discipleship group, but also to grow in your walk with the Lord. It's an awesome way to grow in your walk with Jesus. Starting a discipleship group, number two, is a great way to serve people and to grow as a leader. You know, you grow in your teaching skills, you grow in your leadership skills, all those kind of things just by getting into it and doing it. On-the-job training is the most effective training. Number three, you should start a discipleship group because it's a great way to lead people that don't know the Lord into a relationship with Him. It's an awesome way to help people get saved is to invite them to your discipleship group, people that you've been sharing the gospel with. Invite them to your group to be around other believers, to encounter God in His presence, and to learn about Jesus from the Word of God. That is an awesome way to see people get saved. Number four, you should start a discipleship group because it's a great way to help other believers grow strong in their faith, in their own walk with God. You know, we talked a couple training videos ago about the importance of regularly fellowshipping with other believers. Starting a discipleship group creates a place where you're serving them and giving them that opportunity to grow strong in their faith. And then finally, number five, starting a discipleship group is a great way to build lasting, deep friendships. Because you're not just talking about the weather, you're talking about the real issues of life centered around the Word of God and the presence of God. And when you pray together, you encounter God together, you walk together uh, through joys in life and trials in life and the mundane seasons of life, walking together with the Lord, it is an awesome way to build meaningful friendships. You know, I remember when I was a pretty new believer, I'd only been serving the Lord for maybe a, uh, a year or two, and I was, uh, I, was, I was vacuuming, and the Lord spoke to me really clearly, and he showed me five young men in my youth group. I was probably 18 at the time. I was 18 or 19 years old, and um, I had only been saved for a year or two, and there were five young men that in my youth group who were, you know, three or four years younger than I was, and he, and he told me, he says, I want you to disciple them. Of course, I didn't even know how to make a disciple, hardly at all. I was sharing the gospel regularly, but I'm like, man, what do I do when I meet with them? So I went to these five guys. I obeyed the Lord, and I said, hey, would you guys like to meet with me? Let's meet on Saturdays. We picked that we'd meet Saturday afternoons, I think. Let's meet Saturdays, and we will... Um, you know, we'll pray and read the Bible together, and then we'll go out and play baseball or shoot baskets or something like that, play some basketball. We'll just goof off and have fun together after that. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. And I remember just coming into those meetings thinking, what am I going to do? I don't even know what to do. What part of the Bible should we read together? How do I lead a Bible study? What are we going to do if we pray together? What if they don't pray? I mean, there were all these things but by doing it every week and just learning to trust the Holy Spirit, help me, show me what to do, he began to teach me how to be an effective leader. And you know, by the grace of God, I met with those guys. We met for a while. I called them the Fab Five. And uh, we met for a while. I hardly knew what I was doing, but the Holy Spirit helped me. Do you know that uh, uh, I think almost every one of those guys are still walking with the Lord today? That was that was over 20 years ago, and several of those guys are in ministry now themselves making disciples. And so I'm just like, praise God. It was an awesome learning experience for me, and I want to encourage you that anybody, I mean that, anybody can start and lead a dynamic discipleship group. You can be a brand new follower of Jesus that got saved yesterday, and today you can start a discipleship group and lead a good discipleship group. So I'm in this video and the one to follow this on this uh, evangelism training playlist, I'm going to show you how to lead and start a dynamic discipleship group. So here's four things you can do to start a discipleship group. Number one, pray. Pray for God to bless and build your group. 
You know, Psalm 127 says this, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. And you know, that is such a true statement. You know, it's like, God, I am incapable in and of myself of building a healthy discipleship group where people get saved, where people encounter God, where people grow strong in their relationship with Jesus. Lord, I can't do this by myself. I need you working with me. And so pray and ask God, would you give me ideas of how to help people, work in people's life, bring hungry people to my group that are eager to learn more about Jesus and eager to grow in their walk with God. God, bring these people to me, you know, uh, help people to encounter God in our discipleship group and to grow in their relationship with God and to start discipleship groups of their own. God, just pray, pray, pray pray because the promise that Jesus gave is this. In Matthew 16, he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Jesus is eager to work with us to build his church and leading and starting a discipleship group is a great way to co-labor with the Lord to build this church. And so pray, pray, pray. Step number two, invite people. You know, make a list of of people that might be interested in coming to you, your discipleship group that you're going to be starting. I would encourage you to start with focus on lost people that you've been sharing the gospel with and they had a positive response. You know, maybe they didn't get saved, but they were interested in learning more. Invite those people, you know, go to them first, say, hey, let's meet together and uh, to to enjoy each other and to have fun together and also to learn the word of God and grow in a relationship with Jesus. And hopefully they'll come, invite them, invite other believers who may be new believers and they need to grow. Say, hey, would you like to come and meet together regularly in our group and uh, we can grow in our walk with the Lord and, and uh, enjoy each other's fellowship. You know, find other Christian friends that you know and, then, and invite them to join the group and then have them make a list of people and invite lost people they know or friends that they have or people they're discipling to come join the discipleship group as well. So invite people to meet together with you for your group. Number three, set a regular meeting time. Okay, pick a day of the week that you're going to meet regularly and a time of day that you're going to meet regularly. And then uh, I encourage you, be consistent in your meeting time because if you're erratic with your meeting time, um, people won't show up. If you're inconsistent, they won't show up consistently and they won't participate consistently. So set a time and stick with it and be and start on time. Every time you meet, start on time so people get in the habit of knowing, hey, they're going to start on time, so I need to be on time. And uh, they know what's going to be happening. So set a regular meeting time. And then finally, number four, have a consistent group meeting format that accomplishes your goals. So I'm going to talk more about this in the next training video. I'm going to have this whole next training video. I'm going to talk about discipleship meeting format, what, what works good. But I just want to say this for, for right now. Having a consistent format of what you do every time you meet is so important. I encourage you to be consistent. Have a plan for what you're going to do in your meeting and then be consistent every time and do it that way. And here's why. First, you want to establish right out of the gate a healthy DNA for your group. And what I mean is this, if you're just consistent, like one day you show up and hey, we're just going to hang out and talk forever, then people are like, okay. And then the next time you're just, we're going to go straight into the word. And uh, the next time it's like, hey, we're just going to hang out together again. People don't know what to expect and people will probably stop coming, to be honest with you. They probably won't complain. They just won't come. But if you're consistent, they know, okay, when we show up, we're going to share testimonies, we're going to pray, we're going to worship, we're going to study the word together, you know, and, and et cetera. We're going to set goals. After three or four meetings, the DNA is going to be set and they're going to know what to expect and how to flow with that better. And that's healthy because um, it keeps somebody who has another agenda from coming in and hijacking your group and a lot of other problems um, that can happen. Uh, is just setting a DNA that's consistent for your group meeting format, okay? And then the other reason it's important to have a consistent format is because you want to not just lead the group yourself all the time. You want to train other people in your group to lead the group. 
because you want them to be able to start their own groups eventually. And so if you're consistent in modeling for them what to do during the group meeting, then when it's their turn, they will know what to do and how to do it because they've watched you do it and over and over and over again. Okay, so in the next training video on this playlist, I am going to give you a suggested group meeting format. So please watch that. I really encourage you to watch that to learn what to do during your meeting. Now, Go and start a discipleship group. Go ahead and start a discipleship group. And pray, invite people, set a meeting time, get your group meeting format, and go. If this video has been helpful to you, I encourage you to please like it, subscribe to my YouTube page, and then share it with others.